Just great. I'm not too sure. I'd, I'd want to do them on a, a big sports tourer or tourer. You know, this bike is a touring bike, really. But I just, I, you know, I think I'm making full use of my suspension on this route. And I reckon a Boggo Road Tour might not, might not be quite so much fun for a rider. I could be mistaken. I don't, I don't have a Goldwing out there and tell me they can. Oh yeah, I do this route all the time. Ten years old and you got three thousand kilometres on it then. <laughs> that is hard though. The pressure of work life and everyone trying to get their work life balance right. There's so many lovely nearly new or even five, six, seven year old bikes out there for sale with mega low mileage. It really is the time to be a bike buyer for great value, motorcycling. And I think people struggle to get out. That's why myself and Brian make these efforts. It's Paddy Day weekend. We take one day off the Friday, get out for two days. And although it's a bit of a slog getting out west, it's uh, it's not too bad because you're not sitting on a motorway if you don't choose to. And just rack up a thousand kilometres over a couple of days. Bunting. Ah, what a view. The lobster pod. I reckon that's little boat tours during the summer maybe. I don't know. Ross Beg. What a lovely beach. Wow, it's turn windy, man. But uh, it's not cold, is it? Four and a half degrees. That's a lovely road. Gravelly in the middle, a bit squirmy. But, what a view. Help 
Oops, on uh, the feature of the XCA on the faster stretches of this road, it can get quite bouncy, quite jumpy. And I'm uh, just standing up, I say standing up, just lifting myself up six or, six or seven inches or so. Take the shock out of my bum. And the XCA with its uh, huge serrated off-road pegs uh, made that very easy, you know, very confidence inspiring, you know, because you're gripping onto them like shit. It's easy to stand up, they're huge. I wish the rubber ones of the XRT might not be so nice in the wet weather. I'm finding this very easy to stand up. Not that I need to, because this is the most comfortable bike. Oh, the sun has got its hat on. It's amazing how much you think about the sun when you're a motorcyclist. Great to have a long travel suspension bike. The River Glen. It's quite a small river, but it's lovely. Now see all the signs now. See there's no English on these signs anymore. No, uh, we missed the sign for the World Island Way there, but this might have been a route I put on my sat nav anyway. Um, see the signs are not in English now. Uh, see the road signs around Ireland are in dual English and Irish. But you might have seen a sign, I don't know whether my video was on a while ago. That's an arrow on Brian, super tenor as well. Yeah, I was saying. Sorry, we, I knew we missed the turning. That's, a, that's the great thing. Actually, I plotted a route, but once you get to the Wild Atlantic Way, wherever you want, you make a start point. Actually, you don't need a sign up. You just follow the signs. It's it's really easy. It's really hard to miss them. You'd be you'd struggle to miss them. So actually, you can plot a route just to see how long it'll take you and stuff like that. But as for actually using the sign nav, once you're on the route and you know you want to follow the route, um, you don't need a sign nav. Well, here's um, Meanery Men's Shed, whatever that is. Maybe they sell men. God, I ramble all over the place tonight. Yeah, so you notice the signs are now in Irish only. Um, and I don't know whether I got a video, but a while back, you would have seen a sign saying, oh God, I know I'm gonna pronounce this all wrong. And Gale Topped or something like that. It's like, right, you're entering an Irish language kind of area. You know, it's an area up Northwest, you know. So all the signs of English on the road signs are, are, are gone like, you know. And of course, this is the west of Ireland, not just the northwest, the west of Ireland. It's, it's obviously the place where there are most Irish speakers. Like you have kind of in North Wales, 
Block the well speakers. Oh, good look, more telegraph poles. A thousand telegraph poles to go to a bloody house at the end of a freaking field, no doubt. What you can't fail to notice about this route is you go round a bend and then you get presented with that view. Will you look at that? Is it Atlantic again? This will be a test of your fork seals. Look. I've left this camera in a linear mode rather than the super wide mode that a lot of people use. And they use the super wide because they want to get a great big picture of the scenery. In. But I find that mode leaves stuff looking an awful long way away. I mean it even even on the linear mode that I'm in now. It still does that a bit. But I think you get a bit more of a perspective. In the super wide mode you can be like 20 feet behind someone and it looks like they're bloody 100 yards ahead of you on the camera. Not that bloody slow, Brian. <laughs> sheepy, sheepy, sheep, sheep. Last night I uh, forgot the words of the song. Do it. Sheepy, sheepy. Something or other. I really need to get myself a Bluetooth headset with some music. Maybe I'll stop just talking shite. Yeah. Clean the lens. God, you gotta love these old churches in the middle of nowhere. We just came through a tiny village. And I bet you couldn't, like, be in that village and not go to church on a Sunday. They'll all be talking about you. Yeah. See Michael, number 20. See, he wasn't there Sunday. I mean, there's only 40 people in the village. You think you could come? That church probably doesn't have its own priest. They might be lucky if they got a visiting priest. Such a lack of priests in Ireland now. Mainly because, I don't know, I think people have stopped believing. As people have got more educated. People are unwilling to be told things these days. They find things out for themselves. And they go, no, that's not right. You're talking rubbish. Uh, like me. We're off route. Uh, it's, well, oh, it's a little detour. It was a little detour. Very nice. As much as I'm non-religious, well, I was raised a Catholic, but mother being from Cork, of course you would be. Although I'm non-religious, I do find churches fascinating buildings. 
there must have been, you look at a lot of these old churches when they were built at the time, they must have been magnificent and the money that went into them. And now a lot of them are lying empty. It's like a priest. What's that got to do with motorcycling? Bugger all! This is a brilliant bike! Oh, look, my SW Motec tank bag. It's the one made for the GS. The GS Evo. I'm trying to get back onto the motorbike stuff. This is a GS Evo tank bag. Oh, hang on. View. Oh, lovely. Honestly, I could sit down there with my trying and do a brew. Anyway. That's a GS... No, get it right. An SW Motec GS Evo tank bag. It's the one they designed specifically for the GS. But any bike with that adventure bike's on a kink in the tank. It's a perfect fit for the Tiger. Perfect fit. And I think for the 2018 Tiger, the sat-nav mount is now on these handlebars because there's no room to put it there. It's on the handlebars down there. And I think it might just sit. Sat-nav might just sit between the tank bag and the screen. So that might have to be the next investment. The sat nav clamp, because I can't afford the sat nav. <laughs> so we'll start with the sat nav clamp. And then think about it for a year before I buy another sat nav. Or a sat nav, a motorbike sat nav. But it fits a treat. And I got the powered one as well. Just so I'm powering a couple of GoPro batteries. while we're scooting along, or my phone, or whatever it may be. Oh, look at that. It's lovely. It's a real draw of the sea. I wish I was back in, in the Merchant Navy. Oh, it's gorgeous. And if you get the there's a nice locking kit for these, so you can put a pin inside the tank bag, and it stops you. Really, it stops you from being able to pull the clip on the outside of the tank bag to remove it. And with that locking kit, you get a little combination lock which zips together the zips on the top of the tank bag. So if you're parked up and you're going into a chipper, or you know going down and have a look at the beach or whatever they can't take the bag off your bike or unzip it now it's only going to stop the casual the casual theft it's not going to stop anyone sticking a knife in the side of course and nicking your camera or whatever's in there but it'll do for 98% of environments so for the extra couple of quid to get the locking kit I think it's worth it I have my 35mm camera in there, a few charging bits. It, it, the tank looks, tank bag looks quite big. It, weirdly though, it's not that big. It's like, it's like a reverse TARDIS. But it's very sturdy. trying to get Brian to go down to that point. Yeah. He didn't get the hint. <laughs> right, uh, hey, that's quite steep and tight. So I recommend this uh, Motec GS Evo tank bag, but it's an on-powered version for the Tiger. It really is a perfect fit. The profile is fantastic. And you have to have a certain amount of room for the base where it fits in the bottom for the powered version. So I was worried that the tank would have to, the bag would have to be too far forward or backwards, but no, you can leave that room they recommend if you go for the powered one and it fits perfectly on this tank. <laughs>
here, just coming into a village, town. Geez, I really must find out what makes a village and what makes a town. Uh, coming to Carrick. Carrick or Carrick. Nice village. Hello. Fag break for Brian, I reckon. What? We're not in a rush, are we? No. Let's take the country road. Fuck it. We're going to keep an eye on the water and get her on this evening. You're a fucking wimp, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Weather schmeasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I take the lead for a bit. As long as we're following the signs, I should manage it. I'll just follow the Wild Atlantic Way south. Where can we take the next turn, Dave? He doesn't trust me, you see, because I am the world's fucking worst. Oh, I should start throwing the world's worst at directions. I couldn't direct myself out there back in my garden, and I haven't got a big garden. I reckon there's going to be a bit of a parade here today, because there's a lot of bunting out. Coast Road. So it's a little detour off the Wild Atlantic Way this. Just to take a bit more uh, a road close to the coast. I'm hoping see the sea at the end of this road. Oh yeah, a bit too far off yet. It's kind of over there. Very picturesque view. doesn't want to come down here. <laughs> I got to turn around. There's a coast road, says he, and a coast road. That's kind of easy to turn that tiger around. As long as we keep the forward momentum going. Oh, gravel. See, look, I take the lead. Two minutes later, I'm rough route. <laughs> I'm confused. Which way? <laughs> Back south. I should be confused. See, it's when the road turns in on itself. You're kind of not quite sure whether you're going south on the road or south as the compass is sometimes. But it's not hard, it's just me being an idiot. Severe corner ahead. I'm going to poke myself on it. Kitty O'Reilly's, no, Kitty Riley's what? Pub something? Viewpoint? Don't think we'll stop. Oh, this is lovely, all the same. Lovely, lovely, very nice. Lovely beach. Ah, did bring the trunks. Oh, 
little bridge. Fishing fleet. I thought I could smell fish. Bit of an industry around here. Now you get the smell of the sea. The fishy smell. Ah. Stop looking at the scenery. Minding that motorbike stop in front of you. Here goes a camera. <laughs> That's grand, that is. Neutral. Starship Enterprise off. Grand. 